those of you who subscribe to my channel and watch all my videos know that uh, not too long ago I did a video where I adjusted the uh, cable, the shifting cable on my 2010 Nissan Altima Hybrid because I was having a problem with it not either not going into drive uh, crisply or not staying in drive and uh, after I did the adjustment that seemed to solve the problem but I suspected that my cable was stretching and that I would probably be smart to order a new cable and sure enough two days after completing that adjustment while at a Home Depot parking lot the cable snapped and luckily my son was with me because it was a two-person job getting the thing into gear so we could drive home. Uh, I had to reach underneath the front of the car and manually actuate the lever on the transaxle while he moved the shifter. And by doing that, uh, we were able to get the car into drive and drive it home. And then I uh, just had the new cable come in. All right, as far as where to get this cable from, uh, I ended up ordering it online from a company called NissanPartsDeals.com. I get no promotion whatsoever from these guys, or I just want to mention them because they came through for me on this part. Part number on this cable is the 34935-J as in Juliet, A as in Alpha, 80 A as in Alpha. This is the correct part number for my 2010 Nissan Altima Hybrid. The hybrid uses a different cable than the regular 2.5 liter 2010 Nissan Altima. A lot of the parts in this car are unique to this car, which can be difficult. But anyways, I ended up buying it from them. I ordered it on a Friday afternoon and it came in uh, the following Friday. So I consider that pretty good service. Uh, they apparently are headquartered in Arizona from what I could tell online but this came out of a Tennessee warehouse and like I said as far as that timeline goes I couldn't be happier I am confident or fairly confident that this is the correct cable because it does have all the hallmark appearances it has the stud on the end here which is the end that goes down on the shifter linkage and this big monstrosity on both ends so this looks like the right cable and it has this part right here that goes in the firewall so now the trick is going to be getting this in without having to do too much disassembly I hope so those of you who watched my adjustment cable video this section here will be redundant but just in case you're coming to this and needing to replace the shifter cable and you've never had one of these apart before couldn't be easier um, this little chrome trim piece right here snaps down like so that exposes this little metal clip that if you have long fingernails you don't need a tool but you can pull this out with a screwdriver like so once you do that the shifter knob lifts straight off no problem now we can take this trim piece off now this whole section right here literally just snaps in so open this up and give it a, some light tugs if you have to you can carefully stick a pry something to pry underneath here to get it to pop up all right so once i've got that undone i can move that off to the side you want to just avoid putting strain on this connector you can just unplug it in order to unplug this connector you have to I need an extra hand I need a free hand a tripod for the camera in here all right so right here on the side of this brown plug there's a little area that you can push in right here okay and what that will do is that will unlock this plug so you can unplug it and this plug can only go in one way it's keyed so you can't put it in backwards now that I have that off and out of the way you want to clean out your little cubby hole here that's what all that garbage is on the floor <laughs> 
And this whole assembly right here also just unsnaps and pops out. Might have to fiddle with it, but it will just pop forward and out. And you might have to put the car, yeah, I remember now, I had to put the car, had to put the car in gear uh, just to pull this back to give me the clearance to get that out. All right, once you wrestle this assembly out, again, we've got another plug to deal with here. And looking at the plug from the back side, there is on the bottom here, this black plastic area right here that you can push in. And pushing that in will allow you to unplug this plug without breaking it. You want to uh, set the parking brake and then still I've got the wheels chalked. Um, you know, it's all about trying to be safe, trying to keep this from falling off of jack stands or anything like that. Right now it becomes kind of theoretical for me because I've never done one of these before. As far as how I'm going to go about getting this cable routed the way that it's supposed to be routed. I got underneath the car and look straight up and can see that the cable goes up in this area here underneath the radiator hose that comes over to the top of the radiator underneath this. It then makes a turn and goes this way. And I can actually see the cable where the point where it comes up and makes its turn and starts going that way on top of the transaxle. So the good news for me is I don't think I have to mess at all with this whole, uh, this whole block of electrical right here, which is this is all for the hybrid. I, I'm, I was leery about doing anything touching this. I think if I take out this air box housing, this air cleaner housing, I think I'm going to have the access I need to do this job. At least I'm hoping so. There's just two 10 millimeter bolts in this whole air scoop assembly pops out. There's supposed to be a uh, foam rubber uh, gasket around here that makes that a better seal. Mine's missing. Of course, the front of the air filter housing just pops off comes out with it. All right, see the cable right here. All right, so here's the cable. Right there is where the back of the cable goes into that large metal piece on the end. In other words, looking at the new cable, there's the end that goes on the uh, transaxle. I was just looking at the back side of this, this part right here. I think I want to continue with taking the rest of this housing out. There's one bolt down, right down inside there. And then I think this is just like plugged into a hole right here. And then I think it's just the uh, rubber boot here that's holding that in. All right, that's popping that out with no problem, but this cable isn't really long enough to let me move it around and get it out of the way. So I'm gonna to have to remove there's a sensor right here. Uh, looks like there's a plug. Be real careful, I don't want to break that plug. There we go. And there's a strain relief right here. And there's another one right behind it. All right, get the two strain reliefs off. Now, this whole assembly comes right out. So here's that shifter cable. Comes over to a, now that's interesting, that's a bracket strain relief. Hmm. I didn't see that on my replacement cable. Oh yeah, there it is. All right. So then the cable takes a dive back down and makes a turn into the abyss underneath there through the firewall. That's where I now got to go under the car and work from underneath. Now well, things just took a turn for ugly. Uh, getting underneath the car and looking up, I can see that this is what shows 
towards the outside of the car, just this black square area right here. This is all behind the firewall on the interior. And what I can see are there are two captive nuts that are tack welded to the body of the car. So the way this must be installed is that there must be a couple of bolts from the interior that go through and pass through this and screw into those those captive nuts that I just saw, which means I got to take a lot more of that interior console apart than I thought I had to. In other words, when I look down inside here in this middle part, I can't even see where the cable goes through the firewall. I'm going to be able to get into this area right here, which means this plastic right here has to come out. And that's all part of this whole center console. That kind of stinks. All right, I think I'm onto something. Um, this is the back seat area. So I push the driver's seat all the way up. That exposes a screw. And there's probably another one on the other side. Lifting up on the rear of the console with those two screws out, it's clear that this whole back of the console is now free. So whatever's holding it is up in the front here. I can actually see screws inside here that go to a bracket. And they go in in this direction. But there are no screws visible here at all. However, I can also see these little white clips and pushing on the clip, I'm actually able to pop this out and it becomes apparent that this little panel right here is just snapped in. Back on the inside, up here in the corner, there's a screw and another one on this corner. All right, so that snap inside panel on the passenger side comes out real easily the one on this side is a little tougher because they have the a lip there's a lip at the top that actually goes underneath this panel but this panel has a snap and you can pull it down and unsnap this panel from the dashboard frame which I believe is what I did when I pulled down on this and that gives you enough clearance to get that other panel out now with that other panel out I can see the other side of what horror story lies ahead that I could see from the other side, which is there is a box right there. Uh, it smacks of hybrid technical mumbo jumbo and it's mounted with four screws that I can see. And that is over the area where the cable appears to go through the firewall that I need to get to. So this is not, not good. All right, so this is the uh, technical bit of mumbo jumbo that I was talking about. It's a big wiring cable harness that comes into it from the passenger side. So once you get the four 10 millimeter bolts out, um, you can actually take it out from this side of the car what I ended up having to do is there's a hose right there that I don't know where it goes or what it does. It goes down into the floor and I don't really care. And it just slides off of a smooth connect uh, tube, plastic tube on the, uh, looks like the HVAC ductwork. Okay, so you pop this out of the way like that and that whole assembly, this whole electrical assembly would come out this way. However, all right, so there's the back of the cable where it goes through the firewall, right there. But much to my dismay, it appears as though to get to that, I still need to remove this metal bracket right here. And there's two screws at the bottom, go down into the, the hump here on the floor but then there's two that are up underneath there that I can feel them, but I can't can't get a socket on them. So this is this is really a, quite the kettle of fish they've given us here at Nissan. Okay, so it's not impossible. It's very difficult, but it's not impossible. Um, up the, that metal plate that I need to move out of the way on the passenger side up there, there's a bolt. 10 millimeter uh, clearance is like nil so you're gonna have to find some way to get in there this just made it 
This is a from my Chapman uh, socket uh, driver set. So I put a 10 millimeter socket on there, and even then it was kind of kind of dicey. But I was able to get this on there. I wasn't able to get enough leverage to break it free. Uh, I did that with just a regular 10 millimeter wrench, kind of on at an angle. But that kept falling off. But I, I just kind of broke free, and then I was able to get that out with this. On the driver's side here, for whatever reason, they opted to have a stud on the firewall that this nut goes on. And then they put some kind of a white goopy stuff uh, on there, almost like a sealant of some type. I don't know if that's like to keep the nut from loosening or what. I can only imagine that they put that stud there to help with alignment when you're reinstalling it. Um, so now I've got that all undone and I'm hoping I'm going to be able to get this out of there. Now, unfortunately, another issue that has come to light is this big cable right here, this big thick black one right there that I'm tapping on. That big, big thick cable is, I believe, a battery cable. It goes to the rear of the car, probably into the trunk. Um, and they've got that going through a strain relief right here, which is not part of this bracket I just loosened, but then it goes over this damn bracket. So I don't think I'm gonna be able to take that bracket out completely. But I'm hoping now I can lift that bracket up enough to maybe get to what I need to get to. Back over on the passenger side. And I can see that if I push the carpet down, there's a bolt right there. There's a 10, mil 10 millimeter bolt that appears to hold that clamp in that's clamping that cable down. So if I take that 10 millimeter bolt out, I think I can lift the cable up high enough to get this metal plate out from this side. So in other words, here's the metal plate that I need to move. The cable's in the way. I push the carpet down. You can see right now my finger. Right there, there's a bolt. I'm hoping it's the only one that's holding that cable strain relief. Yeah, so once you get that cable clamp unbolted, you can bend and twist and eventually pop this thing out. Uh, I don't know how the heck I'm going to get this back in there without a fight, but at least it's out. And now finally, I can get to the screws I need to get to. Well, almost. If you can believe it, there's this sound deadening material or whatever that they've got in here which is actually kind of in the way now but I guess you just kind of pry that out of the way and there there is bolt head number one right there and bolt head number two is up underneath on this side so I'll be able to sneak a wrench in there and get those out Regarding these two 10 millimeter bolts, uh, let me give you some advice. Because of the fact that they protrude out through the tack welded nuts on the underside out into the open, they are exposed to the environment. So especially if you live in the Northeast like I do, you're gonna get rust on those threads. So I recommend getting underneath there and spraying those threads with PB Blaster or a similar, um, some sort of a similar uh, penetrant. And then on the top here, I'm using a, uh, a quarter inch drive ratchet. I'm using one of these ones that has really fine teeth in it so I don't have to have much of a, uh, a length of swing to actually get it to ratchet because it's kind of tight quarters in there. But I'm also using the quarter inch not only to get in there, but also because this is going to kind of limit the amount of leverage I'm going to be able to put on this thing so that I can resist the temptation to try and force it. And, you know, if you snap off the bolt, then you're going to be in a world of hurt because then, you know, I don't, I don't know how the heck you would get in there and find the clearance to drill out, you know, what's left of the thing. So I'm being real careful. So uh, if, you're, if yours are like mine, they're gonna start out 
moving pretty easily and then get really tough and that's because the initial threads that are protected inside the nut aren't seized in my case but then those exposed threads that are rusted start to have to pass through that nut as you're backing out the bolt so it gets a little tight so the trick is tighten it back in screw it back in a little bit so back it out when it starts getting tough screw it in a few turns back it out and by doing that you can actually use the nut to help clean those rusty threads and ease it out so that's what I did I got the other one on the passenger side out uh, intact this one on this side was working and coming and then all of a sudden it got real loose and the third possibility that can happen happened which is that the tack welded nut broke off the firewall so or the body or whatever the heck that section of the car is so now my problem is no matter how much i turn the bolt head on this side the nut on the underside is just turning and turning so what i'm going to do is i'm going to put some vice grips on that nut from the underside and hopefully uh, they will just the, the, the vice grip handles will just catch on something as they're turning and act as a way to stop that from happening all right so it's the next day it uh, started to get kind of late and uh, mosquitoes were biting so I decided to uh, call it quits last night after I got that nut and bolt out by you know using the vice grip trick so uh, the only other thing I've done differently uh, that I may not have shown was I, I did pop this little elbow of ductwork out. This just snaps in right here. So I got that out of the way and gave me a little bit more clearance, a little bit more working room. Uh, I just thought I'd mention that. So now the cable is pretty much ready to come out. Uh, all I have to do on this end is down inside here in the console, this just can pop off of the pin that it rides on with a screwdriver all right and then then uh, this cable restraint actually just kind of snaps into this groove right here so you just pull up on it and it'll pop right out all right now I'm up underneath the front of the car and uh, there is a clip kind of hard to get to camera in the way so I'm going to show you where it is before I take it out so here's the linkage cable supposed to hook on right here of course mine's broken off and then if you look at up here right there that is a metal clip right there that's a metal clip that you pull out in this direction and that will release this part of the cable from this metal bracket. So hopefully that's showing up. So this is what that clip looks like. Um, and I'm kind of disappointed I didn't order a new one. It's a little rusty. And I'm actually a little surprised that they don't bother just including one with the new cable. Now I need to remove this uh, cable where it's held by this strain relief into this bracket this just pops out like that and now that I've got the other end of the cable I got that uh, clip out I should be able to pull that right out and just might be some rust holding it in now because of the way this plate mounts from the inside of the vehicle I really need to feed the transmission end from inside the car through the firewall and into the engine bay. So I just want to make sure I could see exactly how this is routed so that I can route the new one the same way. And of course the same thing that keeps me from uh, having that uh, makes me have to route the cable this direction to install it means that I've got to route it this direction to pull it out. So I've got the ten, one 10 millimeter bolt back in on that uh, plate on the cable. And then uh, 
while I was tightening that one, I made sure that I kept the other bolt in the hole that no longer has a nut on the back side, just to keep the alignment. Now, in the hole that has no nut on the other side, I am going to replace the 10 millimeter bolt with this bolt with a self-locking nut. So I'm just going to drop the uh, bolt in from the top here, and then I'm going to go down underneath and try and get this nut on and then the trick's going to be to hold I'll probably have to ask for Aiden to give me a hand to just keep the bolt head from moving while I tighten the nut from below. Alright with Aiden's help I was able to uh, tighten my uh, self-locking nut from below while he held the bolt head on the top. So now I'm trying to get that metal bracket that I had so much difficulty with um, before. So I just showed how I took this plastic duct work off of this side. I did the same thing on the other side and that gives me more room to get that in there. But now I'm having trouble with that big thick electrical cable that I had to undo the bracket. And I just realized that back here near the uh, shifter mechanism, there's another retaining clip right here that if I take this bolt out, I'll be able to lift this cable and move it a lot more. I still can't seem to get that plate back in there. Uh, seems like if I could pull this cable over this way further, I might be able to do it. Uh, and it's hitting this bracket. So I'm just gonna take out these, take these four nuts off and this whole bracket right here should come out. All right, I'm in the home stretch now. I got the uh, pan back in there and I mounted the, uh, oops. The electrical doohickey and just a reminder make sure you reattach this hose it just slips on there's no clamp all right so now the uh, eye here on the end of the new cable needs to be popped over this pin and then once it's popped over I can snap this back in it's easier to get the cable on first and then snap that into position Okay, I've got the cable attached. When you're putting this clip down, snapping this clip in, make sure that this side with the ridges right here, these ribs, is facing up. If you have it facing up, then you should be able to just click it right in like that. Piece of cake. Here's a tip when trying to get the console back in position. There are plastic pins at the front of the top part of the console I have to slide into holes right here where my fingers going so if you don't have those lined up you're gonna have a really hard time getting this console back in all right so uh, I'm just about finished here uh, all I've got left is to reinstall the rest of the trim pieces here uh, the only thing I didn't really show is uh, when reattaching the cable up underneath the uh, front of the car to the transaxle lever, you want to make sure that the stud points towards the front. So, in other words, the stud goes in through the back side of the lever and faces out towards the front, and then the little cap nut goes on uh, on the front. So that's really it. Uh, so now should be able to start the car and. See, I am currently currently in park. And now we're in reverse. And the car is moving again. And now when I put it in drive, no amount of jiggling, the shifter is allowing that to uh, pop into neutral again or, or not move so it's working the way it should in fact now when I push it back into engine braking mode it stays where before it wouldn't so I didn't really understand how that worked I never really used that <laughs> the B B mode all right this be the end of this video so uh hope you guys uh, found this helpful uh if you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and if you're not already a subscriber please consider subscribing take care